Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and magicbrad.com. And I've got someone else on the guest down in the warmer part of the country down in Florida, and her name is Tracy Beerman. Is that right? Trudy. Trudy. <laughs> Trudy. It's my peepers. Trudy. T U R D Y. Trudy. Nope. T R U D Y. <laughs> well, I get it. You know, that's dyslexia. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> So I'm up here in Minnesota where it's nice and cold, and you're down there in Florida where it's warm, enjoying life. So I don't do these very long because time is a commodity that uh, we've all got the exact same amount of, and this is just to get to know who you are and what you do. So are you, are you married? You got kids? All that kind of stuff? Or are you single? Or what's what's the deal on that end? Happily married to a fabulous man, um, and I've got four kids, two of which are still home with me. Aha. And boys and girls? One girl, three boys. Oh, then you had a lot of work. <laughs> Taking care. Yeah, and, and they have bottomless pits for bellies. So what can I tell you? <laughs> down their throat. I know. When I was a kid, I could eat a couple pizzas. Nowadays, I give That's a couple right. slices. That's just the way it works. So this is a business kind of thing. So what is it that you do as far as your occupation down there in Florida? Um, the, the direct things that bring me a direct income are selling life insurance and annuities and, you know, and that's my main thing. I'm also a real estate broker, but that's inactive right now. Uh, but my personal business is coaching, uh, as a, a biblical stewardship strategist. So I coach Christian income earners along those lines and, you know, I, for, you know, with the insurance stuff, it doesn't matter, but for the coaching clients, I look for Christian income mm -hmm. yes. Well, even so, these days in marketing, it's nice to have a narrow niche so that you know who you're targeting because it's there's so much stuff out there. It's good to have a, a specific. There's a guy up in this area called Mac Hammond, and he has a, a TV show that he does on entrepreneurship, and he's got one of those big mega churches up here. And um, that that's his niche, too, is like business type of aspect, not just the spiritual element of things. But it kind of weaves in. So when you do your work, do you do it right uh, like a home office or do you have an office where people come or do you do it online? How do you do that? Yes. Um, I mean, I, I, have to, I had a facility, but I gave that up um, just in terms of money management strategies for myself and where I want to go financially. Probably smart. Um, but I use, um, I use meeting locations if I'm doing a group experience. I use a lot of web interface similar to what you're doing now. Um, I speak or I go directly in home depending on if, for example, insurance, um, sales and so forth sure. like that. So yeah. Yeah. These days it's not that necessary to have a brick and mortar office, um, if you need to impress, but it's just too expensive these days with the insurance and the rent and, the, all the elements well, I want to go to be it. Honest with you, um, I've recently been thinking about that again, because I did lose a high ticket I, a client because he wanted to come to my office and I think he wanted to, to check me out at that level and I mean with the kind of money he had uh, I could understand that and um, so he wasn't impressed that I was trying to meet him at a, a very high fancy location he wanted to come to my office so every now and again you know it depends on the clientele you are working with so if I'm going to breach into that group I may have to do some things a little bit differently sure. um, so that was a good experience to to see yeah, there, I was a member of a co-working space in the uptown area of Minneapolis, and it was it was a high-end type of space, and that's where we could bring clients. Yeah, so you could go to that place too. too. Sure. Yeah, we have those down here as well. Sometimes you got to do what the client wants, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so where when do you do your work? Are you like a morning person when you get it all done, or are you kind of like a, a twenty-four-seven on-call kind of deal, or? Well, the beauty of a wireless life, as I like to call when I have, is um, everything is on appointment, pretty much. Sure. So I um, block out the times that I've decided are my personal times, and they may change. Um, but I'm mostly a morning person, but a lot of my clients have jobs or have something that you know keeps them busy and always available so i have to make some evening and weekend hours available sure but because everything is on appointment um it still works with what works for me so i'm in absolute control of my time well that's what i love about this freedompreneur internet-based lifestyle i've been doing it for a while and you can kind of like 
like for a while, I even did Saturdays and Sundays. I opened those up on my calendar and I would work on Saturdays and Sundays because it's cold. I don't want to go outside. But then when the summer months come along, maybe I'll even scale it back and just take appointments in the mornings. We're in control now. It's so much nicer this way. I may be a little biased, but I, I love this internet freedom lifestyle. This makes it so much too. easier. So before I ask my big favorite question of the big why, why don't you share a little bit about how to get a hold of you? Do you have a website or a book? on Amazon or something like that that you can offer people? I am, I have several books on Amazon, um, for sure, if they, if they put, pull my name up. But my signature book is The Bible on Business. And if they type that in, in um, Amazon with my name, they'll, well, you don't have to type my name, you'll get me. Um, I have a personal branded website, which is trudybearman.com. But my business website is Profitable Stewardship inc.com that's the best one because everything is available from profitable stewardship inc.com okay i'm not sure if we're on facebook but if we are we could get connected and you could send me those links in messenger so i can I'll put them on this video when i put it up to the universe and blog it all out so that's here's awesome. here's my favorite question that's the big why question this is a w why why are you doing this why aren't you like a ski instructor or why aren't you a uh, deep sea fisherman, fisher person, or why are you doing this? Well, this came about because with the recession, Brad, um, I was a very active real estate broker at the time. My husband building contracts were in Florida, which was hit with the biggest real estate bubble of the time. And um, just one year before the bubble hit, I had taken a Christian finance course and I, we were very comfortable, Brad. I mean, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. I'd swipe the credit card, just keep going. It was more of more, more meant more, and I just kept swiping the card. And I had taken this Christian finance course, and it challenged the way I thought because in real estate and in, I was also a foreign exchange um, broke the trader at the time. We were taught about leverage. Leverage is huge, especially in the foreign exchange business. You put a little down, but you get access to all this. That was how I operated. You know, you, you swipe the card, you spend a little bit every month, but you get access to these huge assets. So when I took this Christian finance course and being a, a lifetime Christian, it was like, wow, this really challenged me. So one year before the recession, I started to change the way I did money in the family. Now, I wasn't a major uh, breadwinner. My husband still out, always outdid me, but I had a lot of influence how the money got spent. And just because I changed it, you know, understanding that I really had to be a better steward, which is a, bit, a jargon for manager of what was coming into the household, it helped us survive the recession, Brad. And so when we lost so much in the recession, I was boo-hooing, oh God, why, oh, why, you know? And, uh, <laughs> Basically, he answered me. He basically said, I was not, he had buffered our family. It's almost like God had anticipated what was coming and had brought us this increase ahead of time. And had we managed that properly, I'm going to take the blame on that. Had I managed it properly, because my husband did entrust me with, he didn't challenge anything I spent on. He didn't question what I, you know, he just trusted me and I did what I did. And I'll take the I'll take the blame for a lot of the spending decisions. Um, so you know, it basically was had I been good with that, we would have fared that challenging time much better than we did. And so I realized it wasn't that we were victims of a loss as much as we were victims of being stupid with what we were. We weren't victims. We were stupid with what we were. We had access to. Okay. We didn't handle it right. And so the word stewardship came into my life. And after that, it was like, okay, Lord, now what? Show me. And then I started everything I read in the Bible going forward. It challenged everything I had learned in the secular world because I had gone to so many seminars, so many trainings, so many gurus, so many mentors, so many coaches. And they all taught the same thing, leveraging. And, you know, so leverage, the, the problem isn't, Leveraging is, is the thing that it's not how much money we make, it's how much money we're out having to put out. Because when the recession hit, if we didn't have those big expenses to keep financing, we would have been just fine. And I know this because the man who taught the Christian finance class, he was a mortgage broker. And I remember having a conversation with him 
you know, hey, I'm in real estate, you're in mortgage. He's like, too deep. I have bought nothing. I owe no one anything. I'm like, what? The first person I had ever met that was my age that was debt free. All the other people I knew that were debt free were like my parents, my my mother in law, my the old people. And he had rode through that um same experience as I did with a completely different experience because since he had no debtors knocking on his door, all he had to worry about was the money he needed to live. Right. Whereas we now had all these debtors knocking on our door saying, you owe us pay up. And so it's not so much always how much money you have coming in as how much you have put yourself in to send out. And so stewardship became, you know, my mantra. And so that's it. So I had to learn it for myself and in the process of learning it, teach it back. Got it. The borrower is slave to the lender. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to sign this one off and put it up to the universe. And then what happens is uh, we, if you see the links, if you could share them also, that's how this all works with the Synergy Collaborative. And if you want to do another one of these, maybe focused on a specific topic or something down the road, I'm open for that. I'll be posting it on Synergy Lifestyle Academy, which is sort of a uh, website, sort of a internet college, so to speak. And I'll be putting it on other places too. So Trudy Beerman. I do have Debt Free Wealth Academy, so I would love to focus on that the next time. Wonderful. Okay, thanks again for taking the time. If you want to stay on, we'll have a little, little more of a chat, but I'm going to close this one off and put it in a can. All right. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you.